Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of FTC Crash Course Programming. Today, we're finally going to be jumping into actual FTC code in Envat Java as I walk you through the basics of setting up a teleapp program. So to start off, if you're going to be following along, you're going to want to get into Envat Java from your robot controller phone or your control hub. Um, as I mentioned in my first video, this is fairly straightforward, but I'm going to demonstrate how to do this to you with an Android phone first. So what you're going to want to do is to open up your robot controller app, which if you're using Envat Java, you'll have to first download from the Play Store. And then you're going to go to the three dots in the, in the upper right hand corner and then tap on program and manage. From there, you'll be, you'll be presented with a screen that has an IP address a network name and a, and a network password. On whatever device you're programming on, you're going to want to go to your Wi-Fi settings and then connect to this network and, and enter the code correctly. After you've successfully connected to the phone, you're going to then want to navigate to the IP address that you see on the phone screen in your um, internet browser. We use uh, Google Chrome for this, but it should work fairly well in all browsers except for Internet Explorer, which is pretty outdated now anyway. So then moving on, um, once, you're, once you've typed this in and gotten to your robot controller console, you'll, you'll go up to the top bar and click on Onbot Java. A after a bit of loading, you'll then be presented with the, with the main development environment. And so now I'll be kind of walking you through where everything is. You'll see on, on this bar to your right, there are your project files. So here is where, is where all of your code files are going to be listed. And then you can also add different packages. You'll see that the default package is org.hostinspires.ftc.teamcode. And, and that's where all of your op modes have to be. Although once again, you can add more packages within this package and everything should still work well. And then moving on, you'll also see is that there's this wrench icon in the code editor. So this, this upper section here is where you'll be actually writing your code as you click on different files on the, on the left hand um, project file bar that'll be loaded into the bar on the upper right. And then when you want to build your code to the phone, you cl you, you'll click on that wrench and then it'll build it and then deploy to the phone all for you automatically. And lastly, right below the, the code editor is your console. And so this will be giving you either error messages from build time on your code, or it'll be you know telling you that your, that your build was successful and, and it'll tell you how long everything took and all that. So today we're gonna start off by adding a new file. Um, as you can see, to do this, there's um, you go under the under the project files pane, and there are, and there are several buttons at the top. You want to click on the plus, then it'll be presented with the new file dialog box. And so you'll see here is that you're going to want to put a file name. As you mentioned in the past, in Java, you want to name your files with upper camel case. And so today, I'm going to name my file Crash Course Teleop, and this is and this is also what's going to name the class that's, that's within this file. And then we're going to go down and choose Teleop as uh, the op mode class and this will just set up this will just set up the annotation for us automatically so that it'll actually appear as an option on our driver station to, to run um, and then we're gonna click ok and so you'll see here is that after the new file is loaded and created you'll be pre you'll be presented with a very empty uh, shell of a class like see all you have is, is the class name and you'll see the little at teleop annotation up there that'll make this appear in the driver station and so the first thing that we're going to want to do is inherit from the op mode class so you see that by the extends op mode as we talked about in the past and then you'll notice is that if, if you try and build it now the code will error because we have not implemented the abstract methods loop and init that, that I talked about last episode in my SDK video. And so we're going to start off by just getting these method signatures set up with, with, with empty bodies. As you'll see, we have public void init and public void loop. And now our code will compile just fine, but of course it's not going to do much because these methods are empty for now. And so now we're first going to start off by declaring some members of this op mode class. So of course, the main thing that we're concerned about right now are the actual hardware on a robot, and so we're going to start off by declaring all of our four DC motors. Um, and really, for our, for our code today, just as a quick explanation, we're going to be programming a, a four-wheel drivetrain that uses tank drive and that has a singular servo on it as well that, that controls a claw. Of course, you don't actually have to build this. Um, you can if you wanted to. It'd be a very, very simple build to get yourself more, uh, more familiar with the basic build system in FTC. But this is just a theoretical robot that'll show, you, that'll show you a lot of useful functionality in Teleop. And so you see here that we declare all of our motors. We aren't assigning them yet. We're just declaring them. And then we'll also, just, we'll also declare our servo here um, and, and name them accordingly with good names, like front left or the front left motor. And so now in your init method here, we're actually going to assign these motors to their actual, you know, to objects to values 
And so you'll see here that we, we have this hardware map object, as I talked about in my SDK video, already there for us. It's set up when we inherited from op mode. And what we want to do is tell the code where to look for in our, in our configuration file on the phone. And so you'll see here is that we named our front left motor a capital F capital L. And this is done if you go into those three dots that we went to to get to the program and manage section, you'll, you'll go to configure robot and it's pretty straightforward there. You'll go through each port on your drift file that you have and then give names to the ports that have so plugged into them so that way we can find them here. And the, the most important thing to take away from this is that the names must match. Otherwise your code won't know, you know where to get your motors from. And so you'll see here, I'm just duplicating these for the rest of the motors. It's a bit tedious, although there really isn't, you could argue that you could do this with a loop, but really um, it's probably just simpler just to do it manually because there's only four motors anyway. And once again, don't forget to put semicolons at the end of each line, otherwise it'll lead to a lot of errors. Um, you probably see in this video, I forget quite a bit because I've been using landers without semicolons recently, but it's very important. And most, if you have a really strange error, just look for a semicolon. And generally the Ambajab IED will be pretty good at catching this for you. And next up, we're going to be calling some methods on some of our motor objects to get them set up to go in our use case. Uh, so, for, so for example here is that since our left motors um, are facing the, the opposite direction of the right motor, so we want to set them to run in reverse. So if we set all the motors to 1.0 power, they'll all go in the same direction, which should be forward. Of course, you may want to flip the right ones instead of the left based on your actual robot and what kind of motors you use. Um, that kind of, that's kind of depends on how you built the drive train if you were to build this. And next we're going to set up our claw the same way with hardware map.get and then we're going to initialize the claw to a position of zero and that's pretty much it for our init method which only be ran once when you press init and now we're going to jump into loop which will be ran over and over again hundreds of times per second once you press play and so of course the main thing that we want to achieve in our teleop loop is the ability to drive for now we're just going to implement tank drive although in a future video i'll be going over the algorithm for a holonomic drive with something like a like on drivetrain and you'll see here is that this pretty much just corresponds to setting the left motor to the left stick y and the right motors to the right stick y value on on gate pad one this way as you push one side forward that side will start to move forward on the robot and if you let go it'll stop and then you'll also be able to go forward and backwards and if you push both sticks forward you'll be going forward and in a turn you can push the sticks opposite directions so you would pivot in place and that's the and that's tank drive control and next up we, we want to be able to control the claw servo and to do this we're going to, have to be controlled by a button that kind of we'll have two buttons that kind of toggle between two states um, if you press the a button on gamepad one the server will go to the zero position so it's all the way one direction and then if and then if we were to press gamepad one's y button the server will go all, all the way to the other maximum position which is 1.0 and you'll notice here is that um, I use else if and not simply else. And that's because if I were to ever let go of A, I wouldn't want the server to automatically just go back to 1.0 in our use case. So that may be useful for you. Um, and so I have else if gamepad1.y. And so this way is if neither are true, the server will stay the same as it is, you know, at the start of the loop, so nothing will change. So you can kind of go back and forth between the things and it won't affect anything. And just to check here, we're gonna build it and hope you find and see if there's any errors and the build was successful. Okay, and of course, this program would work. We'd be able to drive the robot and control the claw servo. But as you may have noticed, it's not very well optimized for ease of use. It's not very well architectured, as in if I wanted to add a hardware thing, it'd be pretty annoying to have to, you know, add this one uh, hardware device and then go, go find find the init method and then put something in there and then rewrite code and have to like work around other if statements that may interfere with any kind of control. Um, as well as you'll notice that in my drive code, what if I wanted to change the, the drive system? I'd have to, you know, copy paste this whole thing and change the numbers for each one. As well as if I wanted to go into autonomous, I have to copy paste all this code again into another op mode and then redo it all again, which is definitely not the best way of doing things. It's going to make very hard to manage if when you want to add a hardware device, you have to go through every single op mode you have and change things. And so the first thing that we're going to do is to find some constants, and this is they're going to be for our server position so that if we ever have to replace or tune the server positioning we can just change these values instead of finding everywhere they're using the code and so we're going to uh, and we're going to act like our claw will be up when we're at 1.0 and down when we're at 0, 0.0 and so now we're going to go into our code and replace all of these values for the, for the server positions with these variable names and this will make our code a lot easier to manage and, and get rid of um, what's called programming magic numbers where there's you know just a constant inserted there uh, i don't really know what it's for it's not really explained and it's and to change it, it's going to be very difficult, especially as we use it more and more. And so the next thing we're going to do is 
rewrite this drive code into to be a much uh, more modular approach that we don't have to copy paste you know each motor setting its power every time so we're gonna so we're gonna define a method called um, drive and this method is going to take in a left power and a right power as its parameters because we're still working with tank drive here of course if you could easily change this to take in all four powers as well and you see yeah we're actually naming to tank drive here to be more specific and so all this, all this method will do is set the front left and back left to the same left power and then we'll set the front right and the back right to the same right power you'll see here is that i did forget to uh, get rid of an automatically inserted bracket and of course your brackets have to match up otherwise your code will error and so our code was built successfully here and now we're going to replace this part in the loop code with the calling this method in kind of that, that'll do the exact same thing it's just a lot more concise and easy to read and work with later on so you see here we call tank drive and then we're going to pass in the left stick y and the right stick y and then that'll accomplish it and you'll notice here that i did forget a semicolon but i will add it back in and our code is built successfully okay and now we're going to tackle probably the biggest issue with our code as this code would be very difficult to work with if you wanted to add more op modes, and you're going to have to add at least one more if you wanted to have autonomous. And so what we're, what we're going to do is that we're going to have all of our hardware encapsulated inside of a class, and then we're going to create a new instance of this class every time we want to initialize the robots. So we're able to easily change hardware devices or add more without having to go through every single op mode that we have and manually change this and, and, then, and then potentially forget to do one or something. So we're going to start off by making a class called robot. As you notice, we're not going to be making this as Atelier or Autonomous. It's just going to be um, its own class because this is completely on our own. We're, we're making this ourselves. We're, we're not going to inherit from anything. This is our own class. So we're going to start off by just copying over our hardware declarations. We are actually also going to put our constants in here so that our constants are able to be accessed from anywhere that we use the robot. So of course, you know, up and down are still going to be valid things to set this set the servo to an autonomous. So it's good to have it still be available on this public robot class. And so first thing we're going to do is set up our constructor here. Similar to how we use the hardware map, we're going to want to pass the hardware map into this constructor so that when we make a robot, of course, we're able to we're able to assign stuff to it, and not to manually type everything in, because that kind of defeats the purpose. And so now that we have this hardware map, we can pretty much do the same thing that we did in, in our init method and just assign everything and get things all set up. Um, so also be copied over to the constructor and this will be ran every time we make a new instance of robot and which will be at the start of an op mode in, in the init loop okay and then lastly we're going to move our tank drive method from from teleop to robot so that again it can be used anywhere we use robot just in other op modes um, like autonomous so we can check anything built successfully which is good and then we're going to go to teleop and Here's how we'll actually use this new class we've created called robot. We're going to make a new instance of, we're going to declare a field that will store a robot. And then in, in our init loop, all we have to do is just assign this robot to a new instance of robot passing in the hardware map object. And then we're all set to go. And then just one thing to keep in mind now is that every time we want to call one of these methods or do anything to any of the hardware in the robot, we have to preface it with robot dot. It's accessing a member of the, of the of a robot instance. You see here, like we'll call robot dot tank drive or something. And if we don't, you'll see that there's a lot of errors. That's why we have to add robot to all these things. Because um, now they're not defined in this op mode, they're only defined inside of robot. And you'll notice here that I had a bit, I had a bit of an issue. Uh, this is because Qualcomm's uh, robot core library also has a class called a robot. And Unbot Java is a bit finicky with automatically importing stuff. And so I did have to change the name of robot to my robot, which is kind of annoying. I generally don't like doing stuff like this. Just because every time that I tried to delete the import statement for the wrong robot class, it would just get added back because whoever they made their automatic importing uh, system. So yeah, I had to refactor it, rename it to my robot, change the constructor name, but it's really pretty straightforward. So just keep that in mind. You'll have to do that as well. If you follow along or if you're working in Android Studio, this won't be a problem. And so yeah, and the other thing is that I did, I did forget to put robot before the uh, down thing. And one thing you'll notice here is that I did make these constants a static variable, which means that it's accessed outside the context of a given instance because, you know, down's always going to be the same no matter what kind of robot you're working with. Um, and so I did my robot in, in, uh, in capital camel case because I'm referring to the actual object dot down because this is a static field and this is generally what you're going to want to do with constants because it makes the most sense. Um, 
So you can see here we're gonna, we're gonna rewrite our assignment to use my robot as the constructor and make sure that semicolon. And then our class should be good and we should have a tele app that allows us to tank drive a robot and control its servo. So that's pretty much it for your first introduction to writing tele app programs um, in Java, really in Onbot Java here, the specifics specifics uh, that's what we used. Um, your homework is going to be, well, for one, hopefully you've been following along and you don't have this thing. And I want you to try to add to this program controls so that if you were to use the up and down D-pad, you could turn on uh, forward or backwards a, a an, an extra motor. So you're, you're first gonna wanna add another motor to your uh, My Robot class and make sure to assign it and give it a name on the hardware map. And then you're gonna wanna add code in your Teleop program to uh, control this and then that's up to you how to implement that that's pretty much it for this episode sorry for the bit of a break between episodes here hopefully we'll, we'll get back on more of a regular schedule now um, and i'll see you guys next time